folks welcome to paisa paisa i'm your sanubam gupta b50 on twitter and we are doing real estate on our show after a long time i am honored really honored to have mr bumun arani president credai mchi and president elect credai credai is the confederation of real estate developers association of india and we're going to talk about the real estate sector and a whole lot of stuff right after this short break and welcome back mr irani welcome to paisa paisa thank you so much for doing this for our listeners anupam call me baman uh, like i will call you anupam and not anupam gupta I or mr it. gupta thank you so much i didn't know this was going to be so chilled out first a brief intro to credai and credai mchi fine um anupam we are uh, real estate developers and real estate developers needs a body to represent them to the government etc uh, and also become the bridge between the consumer and what the consumer really needs and best practices in the industry etc so with this credai which is the national body um, has been formed we have uh, more than 125 city chapters and 24 states presidents uh, we divided across five zones i uh, am the incoming president at credai national which will be in april 23 uh, i am also currently the president at credai mchi which is uh, you know the developers fraternity across mmr region mumbai and mmr region and we have uh, 12 chapters under i mean with us uh, and we have about 1400 odd members so that's how it's placed we work with the government we work with our consumers we work with our developers we bring the best practices um, to the developer fraternity uh, telling them about all the changes um, we are we're like the one stop shop for all latest legal um, you know um, legislative and uh, development uh, possibilities that a developer can possibly take advantage or be a, be affected by yeah and over and above this you've got a day job also i believe you are <laughs> my partners usually tell me i'm a very outstanding uh, boss so um, you know i'm always out of the office <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> folks if you heard of rustam please can you tell us your day job bohan um i'm i'm also the chairman and managing director at uh, rustam ji we are a real estate developing uh, body in mumbai and mmr again we are spread across uh, thane virar uh, and all of mumbai eastern and western suburbs and uh, we've been around for 26 years uh, built about 14000 homes um, uh, very strong on the redevelopment um, in in mumbai and mumbai as we are all aware uh, is in a dire need for a makeover by redeveloping the older building and mumbai has been developing over the last 100 years so we have buildings as old as uh, 60 70 years which get demolished and re, you know rebuilt and buildings as new as about 30 35 years old also which you know need uh, to get redeveloped only to make yeah. the area a lot better yeah. so that's what we do uh, we also have two large greenfield ventures one in thane and virar where we're doing 100 plus acres of development right. in both the places that's a lot and listeners get a special discount of if they yeah, use absolutely. certain if, coupon code <laughs> i'm i'm, I'm going to give a let little, me push that happy note i'm, I'm going to give a little tongue in cheek and then we'll see if everyone okay. gets that <laughs> Okay, well, let's um, you know, start with the state of the industry today. Um, both short term, post lockdown, because that was a rough period, and also long term, but that was also a rough period because the sector is coming out of a fairly long slump, so to say. So, if you can give your thoughts there on commercial and real estate separately. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Anupam, what has happened, and this is across the country. Um, the pandemic, with all the damage that it's done, it's kind of woken a, you know, the inner self of of most of the people, right? People are starting to realize something called life, and uh, if you observe the trend around the world i mean i'm not even saying in india but the trend around the world is people are doing what they want to do now rather than having to do what they have to do i mean of course everybody has to, has a need and a need to survive but people are more and more moving towards uh, the things they like they're starting to spend their money especially indians they are starting to spend their money on their life and lifestyle and uh, this has tremendously changed the way people look at a home and i i say this um, uh, you know before the pandemic when i sit with my architects it was how to save the last 10 square feet because the last 10 square feet could be the difference between buying a home and not buying a home for most mumbai guys especially now it's a given that we have something called a zoom room you know like a zoom corner in every home we have a balcony in most of the homes that we developed and the areas have gone higher but the fact is the mindset of my buyer or the mindset of the person who wants to live in a home has become that i need to live my life there's something beyond stocks shares bonds gold you know which which is just right there as, as a this of your wealth but your real wealth comes out of the life that you live and uh, this has worked f- phenomenally for mumbai um, you are aware that uh, mumbai I had possibly one of the highest inventories or or that is what the you know all the media agencies claimed but post the pandemic this has come down tremendously because people have gone out there and put their money into the home of their choice and uh, if we just take a look at the real estate market as such um 
you know, our, our pr- pr- Prime Minister made a clarion call that 2022 homes for all. And not that it will happen by 2022, but if it, even if it happens in 2032, it will be because of a clarion call made by the, you know, uh, highest office in the country and then making it possible for people. Post the pandemic, we also had some very good initiatives from the government, which meant that, um, you know, you saw the lowest interest regime. As a matter of fact, Mr. Deepak Parekh, uh, HDFC had gone on record to say that possibly the lowest interest rates in his life in his, is what he has highest seen. Highest affordability. Highest affordability and people's um, earnings have gone up. Look at the number of new type of jobs that have opened up. Your studio is an example of that itself, right? And uh, people are moving towards, you know, communities, places where they want to be. The location has got to do more than just be convenient. It's got to be a place where they can relax, which has affords enough and more entertainment abilities or facilities around, yeah. the stuff like that. So short term has been phenomenal. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the extended medium and then the long term. Uh, the medium term, again, I see home buyers continuing to grow in number. And a major change that's taken place is the uh, millennials, as we used to call them, never bought a home before before 2020 March. And they some of them suffered really bad because they didn't have a home and they had to kind of stay in rented apartments, which were then, you know, at the, uh, at the whims and fancies of the owner and the society and whoever else that you have. They've all realized they want a home. I think uh, the number of buyers by just virtue of the millennials opening up has gone up by almost 30, 40 percent. Add to this the long term. I think uh, if you look at any business, most of the uh, money that is made, of course, it, the portfolio allocation takes place in, in various ways. But Indians as a mindset are very, very, very focused about having the right home, then having the right kind of, you know, home for the next gen. So this generation for sure is building up its wealth in real estate itself. And most of these are also buying or also investing in, uh, you know, a small shop or a small commercial office that beta bada hoga, beti badi hogi, right. you know, practice karegi ya to wo psychologist banegi ya. So uh, they're very happy that the next of kin or the next gen has something more for that stability that is needed. So they don't have to start where these parents have actually started today. And I'm seeing a whole unique class of buyers coming in and everyone is putting their uh, wealth to use and creating more for themselves. And real estate historically has created maximum amount of wealth, especially for Indians. If you look at our our portfolios, we're about 40-50% of our wealth is in real estate. And I say that's the right way. We do believe that, you know, all these startups and, uh, you know, all these valuations, etc. are great. But finally, what do you have in your hand? The real thing is your home or your office or that land that you have, right? Or your second home that you have. Have. It's it's something that you not only buy and grow in value, but it's it's also something that you will be able to enjoy while you hold it or, or yeah. be able to let it make money for you. Not as much as maybe your stocks and shares will make in the short mm-hmm. run, but I promise you this in the long run, for sure. Yeah, I like the sound of that. What about, you spoke about residential, what about commercial? Because that's also an area which is holding a lot of promise. People are talking about data centers, warehouses, and obviously as the economy does well, that also I'm assuming will do well. Any thoughts on that? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, look, the one good thing that happened to commercial real estate was the fractionalization of that real estate by the virtue of REITs, right? Now you, I, everybody in this room can go out there and invest as little as 50,000 or 1 lakh rupees and own a REIT or own a share in the REIT and that would give them an opportunity to kind of flourish or benefit from the advantages of the commercial property. Earlier, if I had to buy a commercial property, I'd have to dole out at least 10, 5, I don't know how many crores. Today I can, with, with as little as 5 lakhs, uh, you know, go ahead and own a meaningful share in commercial property. The second thing is, while work from home has become um, a the norm of the day, we are seeing that there are I mean, some ill effects of that. Uh, what one needs to do is have a healthy mix of both. So you will have to have an office where people can come together and look at your office. I love the way I, I mean, I'm sitting in a place that's colorful, mm. something that I'd love to come to every morning, right? And people are creating that space as well. Offices yeah. have gone from being just a place where one went to a desk and started working to becoming a place where one comes, meets friends, has a cup of coffee, you know, brings out the creative side in him or her and kind of puts the best out there for other people. Add to this the consumption patterns. You, I, everyone gets on an app and then, you know, is ordering his chicken or is ordering his, um, I don't know, phone or is ordering whatever else that you want, right? Now, this requires warehousing. Now, warehousing so far has grown and we think we've achieved some potential. But I keep telling the people who are in the business, the sky is the limit for this business because you'll have first the large warehouses that will sit outside the city. Then you'll have warehouses in the city. And with the changing uh, pattern of usage of your home, and I've observed that you will start needing spaces in the city where you can hold your stuff. Already in our 
offices, we do that, right? Okay. Files which are more than seven, ten years old, we are putting them in some kind of a storage area, and those storage areas are very beautifully kind of built. At the same point of time, something from where it can be retrieved. They are managed well for fire safety, etc. They are managed well for um, no kind of rats or rodents, you termites. know, spo- termites yeah. spoiling your stuff. So all of this is leading a change over there. Third, look at data centers. Every WhatsApp that you send me or I send you, including a simple thing like what's the location, is getting stored somewhere. Now, it's very cheap to do this, but somebody's got to kind of build that area. And Mumbai and Chennai have, I would say, been extremely fortunate because we are both on that you know cable route, undersea cable route, from where the entire thing goes to the rest of the country. So, Mumbai has just seen the tip of the iceberg as of right now. We will see data centers coming up. These will mean not so many jobs, sure. but a great amount of consumption that takes place. And uh, I, I can again say thank you to the government that uh, they came up with the policy that all Indian data will stay on Indian shores, which is great. We should do it that way. We should not allow our data to be you know, externalized and stored somewhere in some other country sure. because they, that could be misused. So you'll see a great amount of that as well. Add to now all of this, there are various entertainment centers that are coming up. You know, in, in Bandra itself, there's a place called Game or, or, or something where you could go bowling. Uh, look at the kind of uh, recreational uh, places that have come up. A coffee shop has become a recreational place. A mall has become a recreational place. A theater has become a recreational place. Gardens obviously are recreational play, uh, places. So all of these also keep adding to the uh, real estate buildup that takes place. You, I, everybody will see in time to come that all of us will continue to own a real, real asset. That's a home. Or and at the same point of time hold a stake in all these real estate assets Hmm. because finally your money has got to be put to the right use and if you put your money to the right use I mean obviously you should invest in the the growing economy by, by, by you know having a certain amount of share portfolio, etc. But hey, there is an entire class that your parents, their grandparents, and I, I can bet you your grandchildren will also be investing in and that's called real estate. Yeah, sounds good. But let's look at probably some factors going forward and maybe I can get your outlook also on residential and commercial. Two things. Mm-hmm. One, interest rates, which we're seeing are going up. And two, government measures. You spoke about how the Maharashtra government, I think they did something on stamp duty. They did something on property tax. How do you see things going forward specifically for the sector from the perspective of these two things? No problem. Um, big bang. Hmm. Everybody wants the rents, uh, your, your interest rates to be lowest when they are borrowing money and to be highest when they put the money in the banks, right? So, uh, you know, that is an anomaly yeah. that we all will face. Yeah. I think uh, real estate, especially for real estate, the, the rates of interest were brought down to about seven point something and it was at its lowest ever. They are inching up. Of course, they are hurting. Uh, but at the same point of time, your expendable incomes have gone up. Uh, over the last, I would say, three years, we've seen a major change and there are certain studies that point out towards the kind of affordability that has improved because of the fact that uh, you know your 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 expendable incomes have gone up. Second, the government did some fantastic things. I, I spoke to you about uh, one interest rates, but the state government also did something fantastic. They brought down the stamp duty for a limited period of time to two percent. Now five percent and two percent. I mean that's a major change. And when the government gives you something, I've seen. Everybody just loves it. You, I, I could as a developer say, boss, man, a discount they diya. The guy will say, nah, hai, you know, I'm, I'm talking generally how a person thinks is, but I have a or for the hour discount. You know, we, we don't, we don't That's trust how we easily. look at it. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. don't trust easily. Yeah. But the moment government has given to say, say, cheese di. And I think a uh, step in the right direction, the government saw a huge increase in uh, their collections also. And I think uh, with the kind of infrastructure spend that the government is doing, they're going to need this money. Real estate has been not only in India but around the world a complicated subject there is no one single way of attracting or attacking issues that you know are faced by this industry but at the same point of time every measure given by the government actually adds to the value that they collect from buyers of my industry right every one of us is a consumer of real estate whether it's in your office whether it's by just going to a mall or a you know, pub or a club or a coffee shop, we're all consuming real estate, whether for part-time or other. And the government should increase the number of avenues where my pocket can, can you know, um, spend yeah. and which would be meaningful to me for my development at the same point of time, add to the 
uh, value or add to the coffers of the government, whereby which more and more development can take place. Today, I would not think twice by tra- you know while traveling from here to Pune because other than the um, traffic in the city, I know that once I hit that expressway, I'm there in two and a half three hours, right? And mm. roads made like glass, beautiful. The government needs money for that, and this money is largely coming out of industry, uh, out of urbanization, out of um, you know real estate uh, development, out of the property taxes that we collect. We we have a beautiful city. We need to kind of developing and building value to it. At the same point, the government needs to assess that, and they're doing a fantastic job as of right yeah. now with all the infrastructure. I can say this: I was current, you know, just first to the sixth. I was riding around Leh Ladakh on my Yazdi motorcycle, and the kind of infrastructure, the roads that I have seen out there, 2019 to 2022, earth and sky. And I'm oh. I'm looking forward to going back in 2024, and I think everything will be, you know. In, in tip-top class and we'll be able to enjoy our rides a little more. Yeah, and then the, I think there's a Mumbai Nasik uh, Express also coming up which probably will take things to another Mumbai level. Mumbai Nagpur, Mumbai Nasik, they're talking of making Mumbai Delhi a 12-hour drive. Wow. I mean, why would I want yeah. to go by a train? I'll just pick up my car, enjoy my drive, yeah. you know, and, and safety is one of the key uh, key things. We saw how Mr. Gadkari reacted to just a very fatal accident that was really yeah. unnecessary, but uh, he immediately reacted and, and so I can say this, where the government is responsive and quick, I think a lot of good things are going to happen. And everybody says, boss, this is the century for India, right? I'm a firm believer. Yeah. I mean, I'm, my blood group says be positive. So <laughs> I'm a firm believer of this. And I, I, I think we've got great times coming. I'm very happy for my kids. They'll have a better life than I. Yeah. And that positive note, we're going to take a small break, folks. And on the other side, we're going to talk from the consumer's perspective on this really special episode of Pesa Pesa. Don't go anywhere. And welcome back. Okay, Uma, now let's talk about some slightly tricky and hairier stuff, which is from the consumer perspective. Okay, you spoke about how we are whatever you know, call it a low trust or call it whatever you want. And real estate is one sector where, from the com- from the consumer perspective, there's always been some kichatani with the builder, and you know, there are enough videos on YouTube about how some houses are like this, like that, and I mean that whole relation between consumer and builder has been a tricky one. And hopefully, after there are things are changing. What's your view on this? You know, being a builder yourself and representing, you know, being on an industry body, what would you have to say on the trust factor? So I'll tell you this, right? It's been 18 years I've been on this industry body. I've been 26 years I've been in business. 18, 19 years I've been on the industry body. One thing I can tell you, the change is there. Right? Gone are the fly-by-night developers. Gone are, I mean, we, we first of all categorized ourselves as developers, not as builders anymore, right? So gone are the fly-by-night builders uh, who used to kind of, um, you know, do whatever they took. But then you have to go back to the genesis of the entire thing. The industry by itself was difficult to get one single approval, to get, you know, one single bag of uh, uh, cement. There was the, uh, that entire yeah, era, yeah, yeah. you know, one remembers, and I don't want to take names, but there was an entire era that was given the brand of a particular chief minister where you could not buy cement. It was a quota fight, right? So those quota days, dealing with high income tax, dealing with all other, you know, the vagaries that, that occur in real estate development, that day is gone. Now we are on, you can imagine we've come from a very rough, no road situation to a road which is under construction, which is being built, has bad patches, has good patches. Now, if at all, um, you know, after RERA, especially, I can say this, the day RERA was announced, and I, I, I do remember seeing the faces of some people, they were all like concerned, because change, change is the only constant, but yeah. change always brings around this, oh, why does it change? Okay, But I remember telling uh, every developer I met, dude, we are possibly on the anvil of one of the best changes that our industry will face. The day I take out the fear, that the day I take that fear out of the minds of my consumer, the explosion of the number of consumers that I will add to this industry will go phenomenally up. People will put not put their money only in banks or only in shares or only in these faceless entities, but they'll go out there and put it because now there's an ombudsman who's going to take care of them. Unfortunately, <clears throat> people expect the change to be like this overnight. I have not seen that ever happen in any industry. Okay, So, uh, there have been enough and more financial uh, scams that have taken place, but nothing to do with developers. There have been enough and more automobile companies that have you know, gone belly up and, and lost money for a ton of people who may have booked their vehicles. But it's not, nothing to do with the real estate industry. But the moment something is concerned to real estate, they want that change overnight. They want it to give us, Aaj aisa hua tha, abhi kal se nahi hona You mentioned YouTube. I mean, quite interestingly, I have observed you give anybody a platform he wants to talk, yeah. right? Sometimes right, sometimes wrong, sometimes just, you know, uh, making a phenomena out of things. 
I mean, just look at uh, the cloud burst that took place in Bangalore a few days back, right? If it's a cloud burst, my friend, do what you want. There is going to be water logging, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But everybody said, oh, bad planning and all the developers should be blamed. Please, let's be reasonable here. It's, it's not that way. And again, uh, coming to your point about getting cheated, I want to say this to the consumer. Boss, around the world, it's always buyer beware. At least do your study. Yeah. Find out what kind of developer you're dealing with. This is like that if you call it 1,000 rupees, if you call it 900 rupees, then I'll take it. Okay, then you tell it in 900 rupees, you tell it. वो दे दो बस इसकी क्वालिटी क्या इसका इसकी प्रिडिक्टेबिलिटी क्या इसका व्हाट इज व्हाट इज द यू नो हिस्ट्री दैट द पर्सन हैज और द कंपनी हैज ऑफ डिलीवरिंग लुक एट द आफ्टर सेल्स दैट द पर्सन इज प्रोवाइडिंग यू यू हैव टू पे टू गेट वैल्यू आई मीन लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड दैट यू कैन नॉट गो टू अ फैशन स्ट्रीट एंड बाय अ टी शर्ट एंड एक्सपेक्ट इट टू बी द सेम यू नो लास्ट यू फॉर द नेक्स्ट फाइव इयर्स बट हे लेसन वी गो टू जारा एंड डू इट आई एम श्योर यू विल गेट इट राइट एंड यू आर पेइंग मी बी फोर टाइम्स मोर बट यू आर लास्टिंग दैट प्रोडक्ट फॉर टेन टाइम्स मोर फिफ्टीन टाइम्स मोर फाइंड वैल्यू don't go for price and another uh, you know a thing that i always t- tell everyone that i go to i mean i'm i'm on the business development side whenever i go and speak to a society you know they are so taken in by oh that de- that builder has given us let's say 100 you should give us 101 i said no i'll give you 85 because i think that is what i can do but i can tell you what i can do i can give you your home in that period of time but there is that old thing na that when it starts glittering we all lose our focus mm. so gold always attracts everybody the highest price of uh, uh, attracts everybody we've got to do what is best not highest lowest you know crappiest but what is right and there's enough and more examples where people have gone and put their money in uh, ponzi schemes also and not nothing to do with only real estate but ponzi schemes we heard of people who said aaj 1 rupaya do main aapko 1 saal ke baad 5 rupaya deta hu fir uske baad har saal ko 2 rupaya dunga so people get crazy you know 5 rupaya bhi gaya you are where i'm coming from so one has to be clear one has to be uh, aware one has to read at least when you're making such a large investment but probably a home is the largest investment of your life most most yeah. indians will make and it will be only once and you know in gujarati there is a saying jherna parkha na hoy means you cannot taste poison yeah. you, you have to yeah. you have to be right first time right you get it wrong you get it wrong yeah. do you think you know, and especially after you had that massive uh, demolition of those two towers in noida you think that you'll see a day where builders actually become like fmc products which is that high quality is something that people can expect from a builder and that message within the builder community is finally you know percolating down ki okay if it is xyz it means this and <laughs> being a builder yourself um, developer developers yaar okay sorry i mean i'm old school it just comes very naturally to me do you think that message is percolating down somewhere in the builder community let me developer briefly. community sorry <laughs> let me tell okay. you about what credai does we have over the last 15 years that i have i can i can recollect everything that's been happening continually aligned our fraternity towards best practices followed across the country you spoke about the super tech the towers that that got demolished so it's a you know this was the supreme court there must have been a lot more to it but what i saw afterwards when the demolition was going on was there was a great amount of glee and and people were you know we we were, we saw recordings where people were clapping their hands and whistling i mean i don't understand for the life of me why would someone feel very very good about somebody else's poverty or pain or you know unhappiness there's a whole slew of people uh, in in the desire to punish people one cannot uh, to punish an individual or a particular company one should not take away the pleasure or the life of hundreds of other people there may there may be you know many such situations where you could get stuck and then you know if you would you like if somebody else was clapping away for that no obviously not so that's one two is uh, you look you ask yourself this question anubham uh, how many things have changed since 2008 9 in 2008 9 um, i remember people who are still very the you know they started wondering whether the money should be put in real estate or something else and then lehman happened and then everybody realized that money can money is you know it's possible to fly out of your window also if you're driving in a car so um real estate has changed uh, we are a lot more compliant a lot more uh, governed a lot more uh, self regulated also we are all new age i would say changed mindset developers that are looking at building long term value Uh, money as a concept has 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 gone from being something that you hold in your hands to something that you hold in either your bank accounts or then just in the credibility that you have today most of the developers that are doing extremely well are those that have built their credibility over years you know at mchi often credit uh, mchi often say ki mchi hai to bharosa hai the point i'm trying to make is we are all 
governed by the environment that we come in. And, and a very nice line uh, that I normally use is, first you build your home, then your home builds you, right? It's your environment that changes you, right? You you kind of, if you put somebody under a hot tin roof, I mean, his mindset is always going to be a little agitated, etc. But we've got homes, we've got air conditioning, we've got great lights, we've got running water, we've got, you know, great hygiene. Our mindset is different. We are by nature becoming better people because that's what the environment does. Similarly, um, developers themselves with the ability or with the help of the uh, CREDI uh, and CREDI and CHI's uh, constant follow-up with the government and with the government listening and simplifying or trying to simplify the development process, you know, trying to bring in one window clearances, etc. Why would I want to do, uh, why would I want to be, you know, somebody who tries to thug and cheat when I have a business plan? Mm -hmm. Of course, it has happened in the past. No, there's no shying away from it. But I said this not only in my industry, it's happened across the financial world. It's happened across the automobile. It's happened in, the, uh, in your, uh, what's it called, drug and uh, food business. It's happened everywhere. But that doesn't mean we cannot be positive about a future. My one statement to most of the buyers will be, don't go for the cheapest. Don't go for only what is like, you know, uh, that the flash in the pan happiness. Go for long-term value. Go to the right developer. Choose what you want. And there are, there are dozens and hundreds of us, right? I'm not saying big and small. I'm saying there could be a small time developer who's doing just one building or two buildings a year. But he's been doing it consistently for the last 15, 20 years in one particular location, one particular guy. Talk. We, by nature, Indians are very, you know, talkative. We ask people, kya hai, bhai, iska kya, uska kya hai, aapko kya lagta hai. Talk to people about uh, this and then make, make your mind up yourself. Let me put it this way. The more and more uh, real estate is made uh, available to people through tools uh, like REITs, through, uh, you know, uh, fractional holdings, etc., the more and more we as developers will want to be compliant, we already are, but those of us that aren't will also want to be compliant because the size of this business will grow, right? And we will all realize that there is more value in wealth creation than just that money in the hand that at, at one point of time must have been something that lured some of the people to to come into this industry. Yeah. I'm going to ask you a view on a very hot topic, okay? And since you mentioned millennials and Gen Z and now, you know, people are having YouTube channels on this entire question question of rent versus buy. I'm sure you also would have been approached by a lot of people, maybe in family or friends, and this dragged into this conversation. Do you have a view on this? Of course. Okay, um, please. Look, I, I think um, you should rent and buy. And what I mean by that is uh, buy your primary home. Definitely do it. Then when you want to kind of rent, go rent a holiday home, go do what's called Airbnb or... Um, uh, live on or stays or, or, or whatever else and, and go and enjoy that life. If you find a place, which like I said, I was in Leh Ladakh and I just thought there was so much of, of, of uh, peace out there that someday I, I plan to, you know, hold a small little home out there when they allow it. Even right now, I think it's only for the locals. But the day they allow a small home out there, I, I think I would want it. Or maybe till then, like we did, we just rented it for the nights yeah. or two nights or three nights and, um, you know, enjoyed ourselves. Now, on the side of um, whether you should rent or own will always be an economic factor, right? Like I said, if you have only 100 bucks in your pocket, you're not going to go out there and buy a home. But if you have, let's say, 50 lakh rupees in your account, you're going to want to go and buy at least a 20, 25 lakh rupee home, which is then your permanent asset for life. You do not have to worry about what really happens if your landlord wants to, you know, get back your home. You don't want to be in any of those ugly situations. A home is one place where you want peace. Yeah. So you're going to go out there and buy. Um, so rent and buy both uh, depends on what your pocket can do. Um, affordability is not about uh, the price of the you know um, purchase. It's it's all about what is the size of your ability to invest. Yeah, mathematically, you know, for residential places, the yield is. I don't know, some very miserable number of 2% or something. Do you think something is wrong? Is, is, is that structural or what exactly is other, that? Other than the last, um, I would say, uh, uh, seven, nine years, eight, nine years, uh, we've seen healthy appreciation in property prices. Uh, I, I agree with you, last seven, eight years, uh, I'm, I'm talking about Mumbai uh, as a region, uh, we've not seen such a healthy growth. But come with me to, uh, let's say, Dombi Valley or Kalyan, where even as late as uh, seven years back, you could buy a home for, I would say, 2,000 rupees a square foot. Today, you try and buy it, it's about nine and a half, ten thousand rupees a square foot. So that's an, a healthy appreciation. Imagine now going to that area and you living in a rental apartment that, that you paid, I don't know, 
two thousand bucks for, and you continue to pay today fifteen thousand bucks for or twenty thousand bucks for, yeah. you, it would hit you somewhere that I could have bought this home for two thousand bucks, right? And um, you know, a thousand square foot would have cost me twenty lakhs, which is now maybe a crore rupees. So the point is, these are all very specific decisions that one needs to take. If I could advise you, one of the best investments you can make is actually in land because land will appreciate crazily, right, over time to come. But is land easy to uh, kind of hold on to? No, we've heard a whole whole host of uh, issues taking place. People buying a piece of land and then going three years later and seeing someone else squatting on it. So opportunity and risk are two sides of the same coin. One has to know how to balance them. Yeah, I. You're right about that. I was just you know thinking because at least for. Modern. I mean, for metropolis like Bombay, for example, you have the higher end properties now have a very elaborate clubhouse and amenities and all that. As an owner, that it eats into that. Whereas if you're a tenant, you're getting everything in that two percent thing, and as an owner, you're paying seven percent. So I'm just wondering, is that is that going to change? Because it's been that way for a while now. It's not something that you've woken up to in 2022 saying, hey, yields are just two percent and interest rate is seven percent. I'm just wondering what can change going forward for people to, you know, if this gets better in the equation. Any? So, um, Anubhav, when I was very young, okay, I was a lot more reckless than I am today. I'm, you know, a lot more careful with what I do, how I do. I'm concerned about people around me, about myself. So it's all about time and space, right? Right and wrong is all about your time and space. What you're going through today is not the same thing you're going to go through tomorrow. Your mindset has got to change. Muhammad Ali had said, if you're thinking at 50, what you were thinking at 20, you wasted 30 years of your life. So we have to read from history and understand that at some point of time, just, and I, I could spin this the other way around and say, boss, why own anything when your own life is on rent? You know, you're not going to be around forever. But now, this is a decision that most of us have to make by ourselves yeah. about about situations. If I were to guide, um, let's say my brother or my children or, or, or my dear friends, I would definitely tell them to go out and own a home. It really doesn't matter, you know. I mean, you could you could put that same money into into some other asset or some other uh, uh, investment class and lose it. Yeah. Who knows? But at least this home would be yours. Of course, if it's if it's gone through the right pro- if you've gone through the right process, check things out. This home is yours for life. It's a value build. If nothing else, uh, you know, just a few days back we were having a discussion. Sometimes the share prices, you know, you you buy them at five hundred and they go down to four rupees. What are you going to do? Yeah. You have nobody to hold. But your home, even if it's bought at five, you know, at, at, at 50, 5,000 rupees a square foot, it could go down to four and a half thousand rupees, right? right? But you can still get value out of it. One. Two, you can live there. Yeah. You're living there. Or three, you could rent it out. And maybe the rents were 50,000 rupees and now they're down to 40, 45,000 rupees, right? It's okay. It's, it's still earning you money. Sure. So every asset class and every opportunity has risks attached to it. You're supposed to look at your pocket and your investments in it. It's never about right and wrong with what has been done. It is about right and wrong in that time and space with what has been done. Yeah. You know, when wars take place, people, you know, lose a lot of lot of their stuff. But, I mean, th- that was that time. Yeah. Today, in the times of peace, you, you can go to the same war-affected zones and sit down and, you know, see the museums of, of what, what valor our, our soldiers have had. It's all about time and space. Sure. I'm never going to be able to give you an answer. Is it right? Today, maybe yeah. it's the best time to go and buy a home. Was it the same, uh, you know, six years back? No, in 2012, if I had not bought a home till 2015, I wouldn't have felt the pinch and I could have bought it in 2015 and there wouldn't be such an appreciation, especially in Mumbai. Yeah. But the same thing, if I took you to a Dombivali or a Virar or a, a, a Palgar, I'd say, hey, you, you, you know, if, if I had purchased this home in 1500 bucks, I wouldn't be purchasing it 5000 bucks today. Yeah. So... Okay, last question as a specific checklist for our listeners. Maybe mm-hmm. three, four, five points that you would tell them this is what you should look out for when you're going to buy your own house. Okay, this is not for investment. This is like you said, please, you know, that you should ideally or you should have your own home. What would you tell them? One, two, three, four, five, anything. So, Zameen Bolti, you know, the place speaks. We, are, we especially as Indians are, are, are very, uh, you know, we have a lot of feeling, right? Wherever you're buying a home, go stand on that particular location and, and, and feel the energy. Just stand there for 5 minutes, 15 minutes, see the kind of people around you. Do you want to be around those people? Do you want your children to grow up in that area? Very important. Uh, second is, if you're buying it from, let's say, uh, under construction kind of uh, this, go please check out, uh, you know, hire a, a small-time lawyer. They don't cost too much. The price is soon forgotten. You know, the value that he will build or she will build is, is going to be long-term. Check everything out for yourself. Third, go and nowadays there are a whole host of, we ourselves as developers host the right kind of, you know, um, uh, financing schemes for you. 
please evaluate what works for you. A five-year loan, a 15-year loan, a floating interest rate, a fixed interest rate. There's a little bit of research that one has to do and enjoy that process because it's your home, right? So do that. F definitely study uh, the history of the developer. Um, is he someone that does does exactly what has been said, or is I, mean, I keep saying he? But is is the company something that the, someone that you know builds exactly what they've said? Do they give you value? Do they build it in time? Uh, what are the long term you know steps that that the developer would have taken to see that your life is better? There is only so much that one needs to do. Beyond that, if uh, if you did not have the time for all of that, then. It's like the watch you wear or the car you drive or the shoes you have. It's all about the brand, right? You know what that brand means, right? If, if I'm wearing a, a, a Levi's pair of jeans, I know they mean comfort. I know they mean, you know, they will last me for a long time. I know they're, they're about a particular style that suits me. It may not suit you. You might like skinnies from some other brand. But the point is, we all are individuals and we all have our individual needs. And that is exactly the concept of brands that has grown from 1950s to date and I think 75 or 72 years of history is good enough to teach us what exactly is, is good for us yeah. and invest in that particular brand because that that's that, that kind of resonates with you do that much uh, and finally of course when you're when you're building a home I say this no matter how big the house no matter what kind of furnishing you have a house or a home is built by the people in it so let's all be very very concerned about the people we have around us build and a community that nice warm and fuzzy note folks that is a wrap on this episode of Pesa Vesa my guest Bhuman Irani I always remember Khosla Ka Ghosla, you know and since you mentioned the lawyer angle and the title angle it just takes me back and the namesake that absolutely <clears throat> great actor is Buff. This is just you know, what a coincidence. Let me put it. Let me put it on record. I, I am. I am thankful huh. that there is an actor called <laughs> Bhaman Irani because it kind of uh, gets you through most doors because people are expecting him to come. And jokingly, I told him once, you know, why don't you just become my, the rep for my company? And I don't mind giving you a small stick. Now, <laughs> small is where the discussion will be. But hey, Bhaman, thank you very much for <laughs> being a great actor. I mean, I, I truly believe you're a great actor. You're a lovely singer. You used to be a great photographer at one point of time and Sid did some of the most amazing Miss you, India model pics that uh, you I know were taken. I have no idea about this. You guys Bal, know each Bal other. Baman Iranis are multi-talented. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Oh, good Lord. And, uh, How about that? Just, just as a as a side by, every time I, I kind of uh, reserve a hotel room somewhere, I'm, I'm always upgraded to the suite <laughs> and all thanks to his name. So, <laughs> hey, I owe you big time, brother. Let's hope that he is listening to this. God bless your community. I'm telling you that they are, you know... As I say, there used to be the song called We Build the City of Rock and Roll by Starship. Yeah. Your community has literally, if you yeah. look at the buildings that have been made, yeah. just you guys have actually built the city on, of rock and roll. Because that's Bombay. You know? and, <laughs> and, and even today, some of uh, the very respected names in the real estate business, especially in Mumbai, are uh, from the Parsi community. And yeah. I say, hey, may our tribe increase. I will. <laughs> Cheers to that. And on that uh, very positive note, folks, that is a wrap on this episode of Pesa Pesa, my guest, Bumanani. Thank you. President-elect Confederation of Real Estate Developers Association. Let me make it easy for you. I am the president-elect at CREDAI National, which is the <laughs> Confederation of Real Estate Developers Association of India, but CREDAI is the acronym we go by. And I am presently the president of CREDAI MCHI, which is our local chapter, um, where we have about 12 units with us. Um, so that's that's a, little, that's a little bit about us. You see why that was such a special episode. Where do I get help like this? <laughs> and I happen to be chairman and managing director of Rustamji. That's my day job. <laughs> and... Do please drop by more often out here. I love your office. I think the coffee was great. Yeah, sure. I'll come as often as you call me. Well, IBM guys, I hope you're listening to that and we have him again on our show. Thank you so much, Bhavan, for your time. No, 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 Thank you. Thank you very much, all of you. And listeners, thank you for listening to this episode of Pesa Besa. If you like this podcast, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you get all our video episodes. You can check out other interesting podcasts on the IBM Network. You can listen to us on the IBM Podcast app or ibmpodcast.com. You can also follow us on our social media. We are IBM Podcast on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want to reach out to me, I'm your host, Anubam Gupta, B50 on Twitter. Folks, thank you so much for listening to Pesa Besa. No material on the show should be considered as financial advice. The material on the show is for informational purposes only. Please consult a financial advisor before taking any 